Will you bring me a gl little glass of water, please? A, a normal glass. It doesn't have to be little. <laughs> The summer of 1992, a group of us would go out to lunch and we see somebody sweeping the street. And when we came back from lunch, he was often sound asleep in a door well. And we didn't know who he was, so we didn't pay much attention to him. So one day he came up to me and he asked, uh, could he borrow $20? And uh, I said, uh, why should I give you any money? You have a job. He said, no, he had just been fired. I asked, what for? He said, uh, sleeping on the job. I asked who had hired him. And he told me a guy called Tony Goldman, who's in real estate, who I'd never met before, or nor had I heard of him at that point, who had his offices across the street. So I went and knocked on his door and I said, Mr. Goldman, I see you just fired this man for uh, sleeping on the job. He said, yes. I said, are you going to continue and find another sweeper for the streets? And he said, no, he just bought four buildings in Miami and he would be down there for the next two years. So I said, would you mind if I got a sweeper? And he said, no, not at all. And I said, do you, how much do you pay this sweeper and who pays his salary? And he said he had 12 stores between Prince Street and Spring Street that all each paid $600 a year to pay a salary. So I said, asked if he would mind if I went and speak, spoke to the 12 stores. They all wanted to continue. So I said, holy man, where am I going to get a sweeper? And my assistant at the time said, well, the Bowery, there's something called the Bowery Residence Committee, which is about five, six blocks from here, up in the Bowery. At the time, it was a drug-oriented area and, and a lot of, you know, $5 a night hotels and things like that up there. It's changing now as the new museum has moved in and lots of other galleries now. So I went up and knocked on the door of the executive director of this place I'd never heard of. I talked to him for about an hour and 15 minutes. He did all the talking, telling me uh, what they did there. And uh, one of the things they did, they took men out of jails and put them, they housed them, clothed them, fed them, and had medical attention for them because some of them were still on dope and uh, on drugs. And, uh, and he told me how they were 99% government funded, this, this organization. And he said, well, you know, we, we have them for two years. We spend thirty to $33,000 a year on each one, housing them, feeding them, clothing them. But the most money they spent was on either drug rehabilitation, alcohol, or psychiatric. They had a psychiatric ward too. Then they would go out, They at their, their two years were up, and they would go out in the street again and start drugs and steal and get put in jail and they would come right back out again, but back into their organization. And it really did no good unless there was an outcome. So I, I asked, I said, well, maybe would you have one of your men who could come down and sweep this street? And if he did a good job, I would recommend him for an outside job. And he said, he thought about it a minute and threw up his hands and said, hallelujah, you could be my savior. And I said, how so? He said, because these men we took wouldn't be in this vicious cycle of two years here and then going out in the street again because nobody would hire them because they had a criminal record. But two days later, he called me. I found a guy here who would like to come and uh, do it because he wants to get an outside job, doesn't want to go out in the street again. So we started, I started something called the Soho Partnership at the time. And uh, we got going and that went well here. And then he called me, he said he had a second guy who would like to do that. And I said, well, you'll have to wait a bit and I have to go around and get 
talk to more stores and get another route for him, which I did. And that took a little time. I had to go and buy more, another uniform. I had no intention of starting a big, uh, big thing, buy another uniform and get more buckets and brooms. So that started, now I had two men. Well, within three months, I had eight people on the street and I had to uh, close down this area for a studio and, uh, and the place below and we moved desks, they were all desks in here eventually, and this was the office for the homeless, which is, we eventually had uh, about six partnerships, so uh, Soho Partnership, Tribeca Partnership, Hudson Square Partnership, 23rd Street Partnership, NoHo Partnership, we had these partnerships all over the place, and we, about six or seven years ago, we consolidated them all into something called ACE, the Association of Community Employment Programs for the Homeless. Our objective at, uh, still is, we take homeless men and women currently living in shelters, homeless shelters, and drug treatment centers all over New York City with the objective of getting them a full-time job and permanent housing through a four to six months training program. And in the training program, 70% of it is, uh, is for education because many of the people we take in can't read or write and over 40% have a sixth grade education or less. So at our headquarters, which are just up here in Broadway, uh, we have uh, teachers and lots of other people come and teach and we have uh, 24 volunteers that come because you don't need a PhD in, in teaching to teach these people ABC. When I started it, however, 10% was for education, 90% for cleaning communities. Now it's 70% education and 30% cleaning communities. So we've uh, that's that's how it's all happened uh, uh, and uh, so we now have uh, we've been in business this is our 25th year and uh, we've taken we've found jobs and trained them and the training is very hard sometimes it goes on for a year for them before they can find a job we we've, we've doubled in the last five years and and every year we seem to grow about 15 to 20% in income.